Uh, good afternoon from the Riverside. Welcome to On The Whistle, our weekly Sun & Echo post-match Q&A with your questions. I've only just decided yesterday it's going to be called On The Whistle, so I'm hoping James has listened to this so he can put the correct name on, but time will tell. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by my good friend Nick Barnes from BBC Radio Newcastle. Good Hello, afternoon. Nick. Afternoon. Um, we're we're going to get to your questions in a second, but first of all, Nick, what did you think of that game? Quite a tough one to assess. Um, in, in a sentence, a game of two halves. I thought Sunderland should probably have gone in at half time with at least a one goal lead. I mean, the, the glaring miss was um, bars from three yards. I mean, Vandenberg, yeah, all good to him clearing it on the line, but it got tangled under his feet. You just think with a bit more, if that had been a striker in there, that would have been in the back of the net. I think Barr you know, sort of struck it straight at the defender and someone should have really just smashed it. And a couple of other half chances for Barr, a couple of other chances as well, one or two for Borough. But I, I think chances wise, Sunderland edged it. I thought um, they started the game well. I thought they started the game the better of the two teams. I thought Borough came into it 15, 20 minutes and then perhaps started to slow things down and just disrupt what Sunderland had been trying to start with the press. Second half was just Borough. I mean, Barlasa was running the show. And I think the substitutions were the key then. Um, Rooster and Roberts to a degree, but I thought the, the, what really changed the game in favour of Sunderland was Borough's substitutions, actually. It took Dan, Dan Barlasa off, who was the one player I thought was... Uh, driving the game for them and their substitutions actually disrupted Borough more than Sunderland. They actually played into Sunderland's hands and Rusin then scoring a goal which, uh, look, I don't think he, you know, he expected that to go in. The co- I, don't, I don't think the goalkeeper expected to shoot from where he no. did. I didn't he caught, he caught him out, didn't he? He, 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 he caught, caught me out. out. He caught yeah. the keeper out. Um, I think you might have caught himself out. But I probably did. I mean, but, you know, look, you get a chance like that and I think as, as Benno said to me in the commentary, He's done that because he's got a bit of confidence now. Yeah, his energy, uh, his, his energy, energy really turned the game, didn't so, it? Obviously, that was a bit fortunate, but I think we have to give him a lot of, do, lot of credit. Uh, don't we? So credit to him, um, and you know, ultimately, one-one. I said before before the game, I would take a point. I thought it might finish one-one. I think after the game, it was probably a fair result for for both teams. Good, good point in different performance. I think, I think so. I would say. Yeah, good point, as you say, in different performance. I mean, the question is, I mean, I've been having a discussion. Uh, while waiting to interview um, Hjelda about are Middlesbrough and Sunderland without strikers good enough to finish in the top six I, and, and that could be, you know that's the, an interesting debate I went and looked at half time compared the two starting 11s from the 2-0 game last January which you know obviously turned to a degree on the red card Stewart Ahmad Chubarak Pom I do think both sides were probably stronger a year ago and I have to say I think we've both got a battle on let's have a look at some of these questions um, Ethan Todd message cheers Ethan why is Rusin not starting every week? I'll start off with this one. I think it was fair enough to pick Bersko having got his goal last week. I think that was a fair decision. I think having waited so long for Striker to get on the score sheet, I think you have to give them another chance mm-hmm. when they score. What I would say is that I thought Mason and Bersko really struggled today. I thought he struggled to hold the ball up. Um, I thought Rusin completely changed the game. Um, and I think it would be very harsh on him not to start against Plymouth. The one thing I would say again, and Beale's just been alluding to it there, Rusin looks most dangerous through the wide areas, doesn't he? Whether it's cutting in off the right flank, whether it's cutting in off the left flank, um, he, he doesn't really look like an out-and-out out nine to me. He almost looks like someone who wants to burst in from the wide areas. But I think his energy and his application, I think he deserves to start next week, then, doesn't he? I, I agree with everything you said, and I'll add to that, that tenacity he showed at one point when he went head-to-head with Luke Ayling down in the corner of the penalty area for a, effectively a lost cause. The ball was going nowhere. Sunderland weren't going to score from that situation, but he just chased Ayling down. He wasn't going to let him out of his sights. And he was chasing people down. His energy compared to Mason Burstow's energy, they look to be poles apart. And I, th- and I think, like you, I mean, I think if Burstow didn't have a great game today, didn't build on what he did last week, you know, the scoring the goal and earning his place. But I think if Rusin doesn't start against Plymouth, I'd be very, very surprised. And it, and it did disrupt the didn't it? Because they had the game all their own way, didn't they? They were yeah. so dominant on the ball. But yeah, I it's think... It's a terrier. Both, I mean, so he's, he's yeah. an absolute little terrier. I think we're both in agreement on this one. So we've got yeah. a question from, from Thomas. Now, this question's being sent in in French, which is fantastic, but... I have had to use Google Translate because my GCSE French is no longer up to the mark. So if I've completely never up to the mark. If I've completely misunderstood your question, Thomas, please forgive me. But we've got one here which says, "Why is Seelt not starting?" Now I was a bit surprised to see Seelt not start. I thought he did well the last couple of games. What I would say is, I do think it makes a difference having a natural left footer at right back. Trey Hume looks to me like much better at right back, and I thought he had a good game today. Um, I thought Yelda did okay. 
I think he looked a bit nervous at times on the ball, but it's an entirely new team, an entirely too new way of playing. So I think that was to be expected. He hasn't played a lot of football recently. Um, and I think the reality is, Thomas, Dan Ballard's on nine yellow cards. We're told his shoulder injury is fine, which is a huge mm -hmm. relief. But I think Jensen's going to be in the team pretty soon, isn't I, I, think I think he will. And Kjelda just said to me downstairs he prefers to play centre-back than left-back. Um, but in answer to your is question, right? yeah, 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 he said very much he's, he, he would prefer to be... In fact, he says, I'll play anywhere, um, even up front. Get but up front, he basically, there we go, Never mind uh, the, Exactly. If the, if, the, if the preference left-back or centre-back, he said he'd rather play centre-back. But... Look, he's going to play wherever he's asked to play. I think why he's in the team and why that decision was made was probably given away by Michael Beale um, in the week when they were talking about signing Callum Styles and um, Leo Hjelda. Both Christian Speakman and Michael Beale talked about having a natural left footer for balance, someone who can push into midfield as well if needs be and counter Jack Clark on the left wing. But, but it's all about you know, balance. Michael Beale, I think, probably more prominently than Christian Speakman saying that they needed to get and it looks as though Callum Styles was the player he feels is going to be his left back yeah that was interesting wasn't it because we know but, Styles is a midfielder and everyone primarily. seems to see him as a midfielder but yeah. Beale's comments to me anyway certainly suggested that he, he sees him, as, him, a him as a left back and that 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 suggestion and the fact that he held a start today I think he wants to get a natural left footer in yeah. there at left back and Silk can feel unlucky um I don't think he did anything wrong he should have probably started the game if they hadn't brought in a left back he would have been playing um uh, and he will get his chance. There's no, there's no question. You know, I think you know they they are a young group who who don't seem to be phased at the moment when they're left out of the team. I think they feel that they do get their opportunity at some point. Yes, he'll be a little bit disappointed not to be playing. It's it's all how Michael Beale deals with it behind the scenes in, in terms of an arm around a shoulder and saying, look, you will get your chance. You've done nothing wrong. This is a young group and there's a long way to go still. So um, I do think, in answer, short answer to your question, it's all about balance. Was that a short answer? No, I wasn't. feel like we both give that very long that answers. Very, that, that very end bit was my oh, short right, okay, answer. Yeah, yeah. The... Right, should we try so and I do... Have, I should have started with the short answer first. Yeah. And then I could... Should we try and do... I feel like we're both going to fail, but let's try and do uh, a short I, answer. I feel like I'm not going to be asked on here again. So, Roka Rodeo, so, sorry. which is a, a fantastic username, um, is asking why Job is playing every week, despite what he perceives to be poor form. I think this is a fair question. I'd say a couple of things to it. One is that with Pritchard gone, there isn't really an obvious solution in the number 10 at the moment. Auchish is a player who I love watching, but at the moment, from what we've seen in the season, has been better off the bench. He hasn't really impacted the games when he started. Mm -hmm. Looks to me like Beal wants to be a little bit tighter and play more of a midfield three rather than a ten. And so I think that obviously brings Job into the equation. Um, what I would say as well is that I agree that Job, to me, looks a little tired. Maybe that's overly simplistic, but I don't think he's at the level that he was at right at the start of the season. Understandably, we saw this with Dan Neal and Callum Doyle that year, someone came up from League One. What do you think? Well, I agree with all that. And I actually think, funnily enough, I thought Joe played well against Stoke last week. I he thought, did, yeah. I thought he had a, really a bit point, of his yeah. mojo back there. I didn't think he looked as good today. When we spoke to Christian Speakman before the Stoke game and I said to him about Job, does he need a rest? His answer was, no, I don't think so. They're only playing one game a week. So why, why does he need a rest? I think he's dodging the question. I don't think he, you know, I think at some point someone will ask, has he got to play? Is it in his contract? Yeah, I think. Um, but that, because that's the elephant in the room. What we were saying was that it's not in anybody's contract that they have to play, we don't think. But there is definitely a pressure, let's say, on the head coach to get young players and create the opportunities. And let's be fair, that's the reason why Joe comes to play for some members, because he yeah. knows he's going to get minutes. Yeah. It's the reason why Chris Rigg didn't leave last summer, because he knows at some point there's going to be opportunities. Huge talking point, I can understand it, but that, that's, that, that's the model, isn't it? That's it is, and I, I'd be very interested when um, Corey Evans is back fit. I mean, that, that might not be this season. When uh, Romain Mundell's integrated into the team, when we see more of our sheesh, um, and we see sort of more available midfielders, whether they'll be a, a shift around in the in the, the policy towards Joe, because Michael Beale did say this week that we will see more of Chris Rigg mm -hmm. in the second half of the season, which is sort of hinting that the likes of Job and a few yeah. others are going to get rested at some point. Um, and probably need to be, I think, you know, for, a, for an 18 year old to, to, to the prospect of playing 46 games plus this season is, is from where he was, from where he was last season is a, is a big is a big one. I think we wait once you know we've got a few more games down the line and a few more players are bedding in. I wonder if we will start to see 
a few more changes in, in, in that department. It was interesting today seeing Joe dropping back again, mm. playing more that you know that holding midfielder role rather than the attacking midfielder role. And Equa played the more forward role. Um, perhaps should impose himself more on the game, but that's not the point of the question. I think you know the, the question has been you know when is Joe going to get a break? And I just get the hint from what Michael Beale said that it might not be long before we do see Chris Rigg and maybe one or two others starting to force their way into the team. OK, last question from Kyle. It says, should we be content with the results being pretty similar to what they were at the end of Marlborough's time, with the football we play arguably worse? Seems to be a difference in perception between fans and management with performances and what is deemed good. But I think we have to say that Beale is probably four points from six. I think he has bought himself time considerably, mm -hmm. hasn't he? He's kept him in the playoff race. I don't think today was a particularly good performance, I have to be honest. I thought that some had the better chances in the first half, but I did think Barrow looked a real threat, and in the second half they were almost entirely dominant. Fair play to Bale, I thought bringing Roosan on made a big difference in the game. I have to say that at the moment, I don't see much of an improvement on what Tony Mowbray was doing. I don't know how you feel. Um, and I think it, it, at the moment it doesn't look like this team looks more likely to me to get promoted than it did. But that's not necessarily on Michael Beale. It was, you know, they, they sacked a team that wasn't, they sacked a manager when the team wasn't in a terrible place. So it was quite hard to to really kick this team on, isn't it? What do you think? Um, I, I think you're right. I think I look back at that game against, uh, I thought the Ipswich game and the whole game, there wasn't a great deal of difference between the two teams, but I don't think either of them played well on the night mm. or on the afternoon, um, and it was down to finishing. And then the Stoke game, I thought it was interesting because Michael Beale said afterwards, when you analyse the game, there were passages of play when Stoke were better. And, they, and I think there were a lot, of, a lot of the game they were. I think the, the Stoke game, the key was to whoever scored first. If, if Stoke had scored first, I think it would have been a very different afternoon. Yeah. But Sunderland got the first goal, they got the second, and then they actually you know, managed the game very well. Today, again, I don't think it was a particularly good game, but they did manage to create chances, and I'd like give them credit for their tenacity, if you like, in getting back into the game, albeit, I think, helped because of the way that Borough you know, changed the game in terms of personnel. But they, they did get back in the game and they got a, a point away from home at somewhere where the record now, I think, is three wins and 34 mm -hmm. games. So historically, they've got that stacked against them. There must be something in that. Um, and, you know, I think it's a good point away from home. Um, but are they any better? Probably not. Um, and will, will they get any better? It's hard to say. We don't know what impact Callum Styles and Romain Mundell um, and to a certain extent Helder are, are going to have. I think the question will always come back to if they'd signed an experienced number nine, they'd have a whole better chance of getting in the top six. I think it's fair to say that about both teams, isn't it? Yeah, Definitely. I think that's true of Borough as well. I think you can yeah. see that about both teams. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody, um, for sending questions. Thanks to Nick for joining me. Thank you. I'm hoping my very talented colleague James will save me from that um, phone storage error and do a lovely job tying this together. So we'll be back next week. Um, I don't know if Nick will be back next week. He may have better be sacked. Things. He may have, sacked or he may have better things to do with his time. We shall see. But um, yeah, thanks very much for watching.